I already powered up the device, so it is uh, ready to operate. Uh, the best way to get access to the EIP library is to go to eeiplibrary.de, then follow the download link. Um, in the class documentation, we'll find um, documentation for the EIP class and some code samples. And if you follow the download link, we are able to download the latest version of the DLL. So I already prepared this. I already prepared um, uh, a quick example. So it's a short console application. First of all, we have to make sure that we added the reference to the EIP DLL. So just go to references, add reference, search for the EIP DLL. And um, first of all, we have to define the, uh, the IP address of our Ethernet IP device. Um, before we can um, communicate to the device, we have to register a session. This is necessary regardless if we use explicit messaging or implicit messaging. Um, we already defined the IP address and we use the standard port defined for TCP communications. So um, can get rid of this. This is not necessary, it's just for demonstration. So we have to de define some parameters which are only necessary for implicit messaging. Uh, that's why if it is possible, I would always recommend to use explicit messaging because it's a lot easier. There are some parameters which has to fit. Most of these parameters can be found in some documentation of the Ethernet IP device. Um, I have to admit that the documentation of the Allen Bradley device is not very good regardless um, regarding the Ethernet IP settings. So we have to define the instance ID where to find where we can find the uh, output assembly. So this is uh, six four hex. Uh, the length of the um, of the output assembly, this uh, depends on how many modules we attach to our device. In this case, I attached four digital output devices. Um, the header size, um, owner redundant, the priority is scheduled, um, variable length is not supported by this device, connection type point to point. Um, the scheduled priority um, means that uh, our device expects uh, an implicit messaging packet every 500 milliseconds. So this is the standard value. Um, The requested packet rate um, expects a value in microseconds, so these are uh, 500 milliseconds. So um, I could also get rid of this, so it's just for demonstration. The same parameters we have to define for um, the direction from the target to the originator. Uh, that means from the um, point I.O. device in our case, or from the Ethernet IP device to the .NET application. So these are the parameters necessary from the target to the originator and these from the originator to the target. Uh, to initiate the uh, data exchange using implicit messaging, we have to call forward open. 
And after that, if uh, all parameters are correct, the data exchange should be initiated. Um, we have two, um, two properties which allows us to get access to the data which are exchanged from the Ethernet IP device to the .NET application or from the .NET application to the Ethernet IP device. Um, the .NET application is the Ethernet IP scanner and um, the target, this is our um, uh, Ethernet IP device. Um, so we have um, EIP client is our class and we have the property OTIO data. Um, these are our um, digital outputs. So these are the data we sent from the originator to the target. So you see in this example, I um, set some digital outputs for output module, the first and second output module, and I set the first digital output of the third module to high. Um, I could also set the, the last output to high, so this is the This and I also we also have um, a parameter which um, from which we can get access to the input data from the Ethernet IP device. After our application has finished, we should call forward close to close the implicit messaging, the data exchange, and to unregister a session. In this short example, so this code is never reached. So let's start our example and see what happens. You see that um, data exchange is working. I get um, a value of four for the first digital output, output module. This is because um, I set the third digital output to high. And let's see what happens at our Ethernet IP device. You see this is, this is the digital input. I set to high and uh, this happens to our digital output. So the digital outputs from the first two modules are changing frequently and I set the, the first digital output of the third module to high and the last digital output of the last module. So I can now demonstrate what, what happens if I change the, uh, this wire. So let's wire it to, the, to this one. So you see that um, the digital input is changing. Let's go to the, to the second module. And that's it. Both, well, thank you.